Hi, Derek from Lovells Adelaide. Today, we're gonna to have a look at the new Ford Ranger and particularly focus on the braking feature, the trailer braking feature that's now built into this car from, from factory on some models. This includes the electric brake controller, formerly you would do as an aftermarket accessory, but now Ford are building it into the car and that builds some great extra functionality and far more integration with other features. So we'll go through the setting it up, the attaching the trailer, driving it, looking at the displays you get and the feel that you get and also why, what functions come with electric brake controller, why we do this and why it's electric and so on. So we've already hooked up the camp trailer here. Now this car is the 2 litre bi-turbo that's recently come out, the PX4 Ranger. Its bigger brother is the V6 version. Unfortunately, we've not been able to get our hands on that at this point in time. We will, of course, bring you another um, comparison when we do get a chance to. Now, we've already hooked this up to save a bit of time, so we don't have to go through it setting up same as any other trailer so there's no particular uh, science behind that so in this case the car's actually been wired with a 12 pin plug so your standard seven plus the extra five for uh, caravan power or for triggering a fridge that kind of function or the brake uh, safe function that's uh, required in new south wales towed trailers so it has does have the controller the controller is suitable for trailers with electric and electro hydraulic braking systems on them with disc or drums Take the camper trailer here, it's under two tonnes, came from the factory with electric drum brakes on it. Bigger vehicles, over two tonnes, that kind of thing. Typically we'll have disc brakes on them as well. So this controller can control all of those sorts of things. So whether you've got driving the drums directly, as in this case here, or through a, a hydraulic servo system, as on a disc brake system. So I keep talking about the fact that this vehicle's got the built-in brake controller from factory. In the other car, which doesn't have a built-in, you are reliant upon an aftermarket device, such as the Red Arc Toe Pro or the IQ5 from Heyman Reese, those kinds of devices which have to be wired into the car by your auto electrician uh, and will have a knob or some kind of sliding device on the dash, providing pretty much the same functionality, except they're not integrated with the car's electronics. And that's where this gets really exciting and brings us so many more features that you'll see when we step inside and, and look at setting it up in the, in the screens. You see what you get into big screen, also what the driver can see in real time as you're driving as well. Let's hop in and we'll set it up. Okay, so we've connected our trailer for the first time and this clever little menu has detected the fact we've uh, plugged into the back and not having had a trailer before, it's obviously thinking, right, let's set it up for this trailer. So we've not read the manual, we're just gonna go for it and see how we go. So add a new trailer. Yes, thank you. All right, trailer one. We'll call it the Odyssey because it's a Australian off-road Odyssey controller. Trailer length, the ball to the trailer's rear bumper. We'll guess, let's say it's probably about six because it's not incredibly long. go. Next, width of the vehicle, trailer, cargo, which is the widest. Uh, well, definitely not 2.1, probably 1.8. Uh, actually, we'll go a bit off. Confirm. There we go. Connection checklist. Let's have a look at that. Connect and lock ball coupler. We've done that. Make electrical connections. We've done that. Cross and connect safety change. We've done that. Nice, they're talking about crossing them as well. Emergency breakaway switch, don't have it fitted on this particular trailer, but um, if we'd had another vehicle, we probably would. Next, ensure lights function correctly. Trailer light check. I'm really looking forward to seeing this because uh, it that should be a really great function. Okay, we've done the trail light check. That was great, really handy. So we'll stop and exit that function. Next, raise tongue jack. Next, rear wheel chops. Next, adjust mirrors. Good tip. Next, trailer brake control setting. Okay, this is what we're gonna go and try and do next, so. Okay, so here you can see we get a nice, if I'm adjusting the trailer brake gain using the plus and minus switch you do get a nice indication on the dash likewise if you pull the gain trigger across to do a manual override you can also see that on the dash very handy of course we're stationary now we'll see whether or not that also happens when you're driving and we are done So this is clever. Distance to empty will update based on your selected trailer. So it's going to automatically compensate for the fact we have a trailer and will increase the uh, litres per 100 and therefore distance to empty ratings accordingly. 
Um, let's go through and have a look into this. So say so OK and view settings. So we have our default trailer. We've done our connection checklist. We've done our trailer light check. Don't need to add another trailer at the moment. It just gives us a reminder that the cross traffic alert system's not working because we do have a trailer behind us. So we can cancel that. So within the menu function accessible from the steering wheel, uh, we do have a, a number of things and we have the trailer hooked up. So we also now have a towing menu. Let's have a look into that and see what it gives you. Uh, trailer information does show us how far we've traveled. So uh, excellent if you're doing actual, actual axle hour or distance meters. Uh, for your bearing changes, that kind of thing. Tells us what the current gain setting is on the trailer as well. Let's go down a level. Uh, there is the gain there as well. And it looks like a yaw setting also, or a yaw indicator to show uh, up or down. Uh, also steering wheel angle setting also. Okay, our trailer gain is still set at 1.5. Let's uh, drive and see how that pans out in real life. This trailer is only comes in around 1.6, 1.7 tonnes, so it's not particularly heavy in the scheme of things, but it uh, does have electric brakes and it's still useful for for doing these sort of kinds of work because it still has weight to it uh, and you can certainly know when it's on the back. Um, it's large tyres, it uh, presents quite a load as you're towing. Again, at 1.5, I can actually I can feel the trailer brakes working and we have the display and as I have put my foot on the brake it shows us how much brake gain it's giving us. Go a little bit faster and brake a little bit harder I'm sure we'll get a little bit more braking firmer. Yes you can see far more gain coming in on the trailer so it is proportional to uh, the driver demand through the pedal. Okay travelling again and uh, now let's try to get the manual override. Yeah. Yes, definitely. I can feel a little bit. We could probably do some more gain in there though, I think. Because uh, while it is retarding us a little bit, it's probably not enough. And I have noticed that over the years that uh, the brakes on this trailer do need a little bit more gain when they're cold. Uh, once they're warmed up, you can usually back the gain off uh, to keep it proportionate to the vehicle braking. The pitch control is a proportional control. So you can bring in just a little bit. So the harder you squeeze it, the more it works. It's got it in now and you can feel it pulling the trailer back quite a lot as you'd expect because we are running high gain at this particular point in time. Because our, our speeds are low we kind of need a bit of extra gain to, to have a really noticeable effect. If we were on the highway 100k an hour or something like that I'm sure you'd get far more actual, uh, you'd get far more instantaneous feel from it and we'd be doing a far, far bigger job because the speeds are greater. So why do we have a, a, a pinch control like this? Uh, it's two reasons. It's firstly so that we can set up our trailer to ensure that our gain setting is correct. We can pinch it on in a, a situation such as this and ensure that the brakes are working and slowing the car down. Um, it's how we usually set that the gain is correct. Uh, normally you do it at 60k an hour. You'd set it so that you're getting good retardation at that kind of speed. Just driving uh, slowly like this, it's a little bit difficult to get the exact feel. There's a lot of cars that are bought to do a lot of towing work, and they'll have DVD players in them and things like that, and you think, really? How often do you use a DVD player? How often do you need an electric brake controller if you're towing a big work trailer, a caravan, all the time is the answer. So, you know, this is actually good to see that a little bit of priority has come back into some of the features that uh, have been put into this car by Ford. So there we have it, a look at the factory integrated electric braking system on the next gen wild track. Thanks for watching, I'm Derek from Lovells Adelaide, hit the subscribe button below and make sure to keep an eye out for future updates about the Ranger and other models that we have coming.